What's up, y'all? <clears throat> it's been a while. It's been a while. My work schedule has been pretty crazy lately. So, and with my other channel, Two Sticks, uh, going, you know, I haven't been able to do as many of these as I have liked. And, of course, you know, they take a little while to do. So, um, there's a lot of stuff coming out right now. I, there's a lot of current albums that I want to get to, uh, but I also want to do subscriber requests. And so I'm going to try to strike a balance between those two things. I don't really want to go into who is requesting what. If you guys pay attention to the comments, you'll be able to figure it out most times. This is a, sub a subscriber request for a band called... Now, this is a long one. This is almost an hour here. Um, nine tracks. All of them about, with the exception of a couple, are six minutes or longer. So these are going to be some longer songs. Uh, the closer is 10 minutes, so that should be interesting. This, from what I've read, is in a little bit of the same territory as Tribulation, uh, which I don't know if you guys know who they are. You probably do if you're watching this. Uh, I love Tribulation. I think they've got a really neat style, and I, I love the way they write songs. They're, they're really memorable, and it's got a very gothic vibe, and I just think they churn out excellent music, and I loved their... Um, album that came out this year. I wish I could remember what it was called, but you guys know what I'm talking about. It's got the red cover with the gargoyle on there. Um, yeah, I thought, I think it came out in like January, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that I thought that was great. Um, Children of the Night might make an appearance on this channel, so guys, watch out for that. But yeah, if these guys sound anything like Tribulation, I'm probably going to like them. Um, I'm also seeing some recommendations down here for related artists by Google Play. Uh, Wode is in there. I really like that band. Um, Pelorian, that sounds really familiar. Didn't the guy from Agalic or Agaloc, didn't he have... Um, or maybe he left, the main uh, songwriter for Agaloc left. And didn't the Leftover... Uh, leftover... <laughs> I gotta watch my word usage here. Didn't the uh, remaining members of that band, didn't they create an, another band? I want to say it was Pelorian, but I'm not sure. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, Pelorian was a related artist according to Google. And there, I thought, it's a lot like Agaloc, but it seemed to me to be a little bit more black metal. Uh, whereas Agaloc, most of the time, was more folk. Especially like the Mantle and Pale Folklore. Yeah, so I'm liking some of the related artists is what I'm trying to say. I think I think this has a lot of promise. I'm going to go ahead and get into it. This is, again, the album is called Two Venomous Depths. It came out in 2017. Uh, this first song is one of the longest on the album. It's 7 minutes and 52 seconds. It's called Two Venomous Depths slash Where No Light Shines. So this is pretty much the title track. <laughs>
Yeah, man, this is some real head bobbing shit right here. Uh, the drum beat has been pretty constant with a few little uh, sections or periods where it was getting a little fancy, a little bit faster. But for the most part, this has kept a very consistent beat. Um, and the riffs have kind of been there to match. This is real groovy. This is like super groovy metal right here. And it's definitely got a black metal sound or feel, but it's not, doesn't have the blast beats from black metal. So it's a little bit slowed down. I don't know if there's a term out there or a uh, official, right, uh, genre or subgenre called like blackened doom or something. I don't know if that exists or not. If it does, you guys could let me know. But I think people would classify this as like gothic metal. I could be wrong. And it could have a lot to do with, too, the lyrical, the subject uh, matter of the lyrics could have a lot to play in that. But yeah, so far it sounds like uh, black metal for people who don't necessarily want the raw intensity of the of the blast beat and the real noisy, you know, distortion and the and the guy doing the wretched vocals. This is a this is definitely a black metal to make you kind of bob your head. And I think it's supposed to be a little bit catchy too. So yeah, this is definitely definitely nice. I'll be interested to see though if they introduce clean vocals at any point during this album. I think clean vocals would work really well with this style. And also, I've heard that uh, this band, <clears throat> with this album, I read a review that said that this album very closely approximates Children of the Night by Tribulation in its overall sound and in its feel and just, you know, the experience of the al album overall. And I, I haven't listened to Children of the Night, like, all the way through. I've heard, I think, a couple of tracks off that album so maybe if I you know listen to that listen to this first I'll get kind of the backwards the bat the ass backwards um, introduction to the sound if it's true that these guys are are kind of mimicking um, another band so that those aren't my words those are the words of a reviewer that I read a writer for a metal website I won't say which one but those are the words of that uh, particular person. I'll be interested to see kind of what they do with the sound. You know, they've already established an aesthetic in this first track. I'll be interested to see how they kind of play with it um, as the album progresses. <laughs>
the way that song built in intensity and then climaxed at the very end there, or towards the end. There was about 40, 50 seconds left in the song, and it kind of reached its peak, and then everything after that was kind of like a decompression, right? And the song kind of slowly faded out. Um, I love it when bands do that. I feel like a really epic song, I mean, there are, of course, there are songs that I love that don't follow this formula, but I think it really lends itself to, um, you know, this feeling of, of accomplishment and finality and just overall um, epicness <laughs> if a song follows sort of that natural story arc, you know, it kind of like starts off kind of subtle and uh, then builds and builds in intensity throughout the song, reaches a climax and then guides you into the end. You know, you have the falling action and the conclusion. I really like that in movies. I like that in novels, stories, and I like it in music. I think it really, um, it just makes sense. And it probably, you know, has to do with the way our brains are wired. We just, you know, we love that sort of structure. And I don't know if they followed that structure exactly with this song, but the way this song ended kind of reminded me of that, and I really appreciated that. Yeah, I thought that was a good song. I'm still kind of in the mode of... Because I don't... I frankly, I don't listen to this particular style a ton. But I do respect it, and I do like bands that use this style and this aesthetic. So I'm kind of getting you know, acclimated to the sound on the album. What I'm trying to say is I don't know if I would if I would pick this song out as being one of those that I could listen to over and over and over again and not get tired of, but I definitely thought it was a good song and I can tell that um, these guys are competent musicians and I know that they've, you know, they're capable of definitely writing a song that would... Um, make, you know, that I would put in steady rotation. This first song, I thought it was well put together. Great song. I'm going to move on to uh, Within the Timeless Black, which is the second track at 6 minutes and 56 seconds. <laughs>
yeah, this is a badass track, man. Um, I loved sort of the secondary guitar line that came in around the 30 second mark. I love it uh, when bands introduce you know, leads like that that aren't solos, but they're just sort of to, uh, I guess, I don't know what, they, what they're what they really for musically, like if they have a specific purpose, but it just sounds badass. It's like you have the actual rhythm of the song and the rhythm guitar is, is playing this chord progression and riff, and then, uh, you know, this is basic shit in metal at this point, right? People have been doing this for decades, but I love it when that, uh, you know, the, the lead guitar comes in and plays this uh, sort of, kind of this grim, crypt keeper, eerie sort of melody that fits with the actual sound and theme of the song. You know, I just think that is so cool, and I love, too, the tempo change at around 45 seconds. I kind of sped up. That it really felt like, you know, an actual heavy metal song. Headbanging a little bit there. I appreciated that. But then, of course, you know, they went from the faster tempo, and then they slowed it down again, and it became more doomy and kind of plodding. And then the tempo changed again. So the tempo has been changing a lot. If you notice in these first three and a half minutes, this thing is, is going through a lot of changes and a lot of uh, evolution. And that's great. Uh, that's what I want to hear. So I think what's giving me the black metal feel or vibe are those arpeggiated chords, man. They're so iconic. And you hear them in so much black metal. I'm going to find it here. <laughs> That is so iconic right there. Every time I hear that, I immediately think black metal. Well, you guys in the comment section, please let me know who's responsible for introducing that. Probably in Scandinavia somewhere, there was a, a guy with a guitar, you know, in some early black metal band who decided to start doing that. And then all the other bands heard it and probably copied it. So, um, yeah, I love that sound. Overall, man, this is just a great track. This is more aggressive it feels to me than the first song so we're going to go ahead and let it play out here
these songs are great so far. I really loved that song. Um, the the back I really loved the first half, especially before I I paused it. Um, it sounded a little bit more ferocious, you know, in the first um, track. I loved the uh, tremolo picking on the second half of that song, and for a while there, it sounded like um, you know the lead guitar was playing this uh, melody. It was all tremolo picking, and it had a really cool effect on it. It sounded distant in a way. It was still there. It wasn't muffled, but it was definitely, sonically, it sounded like it was beneath the music in a way, like it was providing the backdrop uh, and the sort of soundscape for what was happening in the song. And uh, yeah, I really loved that. That was a great song. I think what I'm kind of struggling with though a little bit are just the length of these songs like and I've reviewed uh, or reacted to albums on this channel where the songs are re super long you know if you have any question about that go ahead and look at the wolves in the throne room diadem of 12 stars video that I uploaded I mean that was four songs and it was over an hour of music I believe so I don't have anything against long songs in principle. It's just that with a band like this, that sounds like this, um, where it's almost like accessible, you know, blackish kind of gothic metal, I would think that with a, with a band like this writing songs, that the songs would be maybe around the four and a half, five minute mark, and then they would wrap it up with stuff like this. I kind of just want to hear something really kind of catchy, dirty, a little bit eerie, you know, a little bit grim, a little bit gothic. And I just, I want to get that, I want to get my four and a half, five minute slice and I want to get out. That's neither here nor there. That's not really a crit criticism of the band. Uh, these songs are a little bit longer than I expected, but so far with the two songs I've heard, they can definitely justify their length because there were a lot of good ideas in there and a lot of good riffs so so we're going to continue here with the album um, the third track is called The Hunger and it's 6 minutes and 10 seconds
so yeah, another solid song here, man. Uh, the uh, I love the main riff in this song, and I love the tremolo picking again. And there's this kind of uh, standard rock beat behind it, and so it's got it's a little bit more accessible, right? Um, and then they they pretty much stuck with that primary riff through the first half of the song, and it wasn't until around the three minute and five or three minute and ten second mark where they sort of uh, abandoned that riff and the song totally changed and now we've got this acoustic section right here. Yeah, I could live with this song. I, I like this song a lot. Um, <clears throat> this is probably, out of the songs I've heard so far, this is probably my favorite so far. I like kind of the uh, straightforwardness of it and it's very just sort of like it, it knows what it is and it's not insecure about it. It's just delivering uh, good dark riffs uh, with kind of a standard beat and it's not trying to do anything too fancy um, but this song I can I can get down with this song I can like you know I can listen to this song you guys out there who are guitar nerds we had somebody leave a really good comment on the candle mass video uh, this guy kind of explained why candle masses riffs sound the way they do and he said it comes down to the mode the guitar mode that they're playing in, uh, he said it was the uh, Phrygian mode and that whenever you play uh, scales, I guess, using that mode, they, they tend to sound a little bit dark and evil and exotic. If you guys, I thought that was really awesome feedback, by the way. That's the kind of feedback that I want to see on these videos. So if you guys, if any of you guys who are uh, guitar nerds, right, or I shouldn't say nerds, but any of you guys that are guitar players and that have played for a long time and kind of know your way around the different modes and scales uh, and chord progressions, if you guys who are a little bit more hip to the music theory side of things, if you guys can identify what is going on as far as the modes that these guitar players are using to pull off these songs, and you can kind of go into that a little bit, if you want to, feel free to do that in the comments section. I would be really fascinated to read that because this, to me, also sounds uh, very dark and evil. So I'm always fascinated because I used to play uh, guitar as well. So I kind of, I like uh, hearing about that side of the guitar playing that's not, it's a little bit more uh, nuanced and technical, I guess, than just saying, oh, that riff sounds badass or that solo was ripping or whatever. A lot of the things that you know, your everyday fan who's never picked up a guitar could say, I really like to hear feedback from people that actually play instruments, uh, where they kind of explain uh, what's going on in the songs and in the music. I, I really like that. So yeah, if you guys want to leave feedback like that, go right ahead, because I love learning stuff like that. But I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this song. <laughs>
most of that song, um, they pretty much stuck with one main riff. They were able to make that song fun and interesting, you know, for over six minutes, and it was all built around one primary riff. And I think that's pretty cool. That's pretty impressive, you know, because you have a lot of bands that will abandon riffs after 30 seconds and never go back to them again. And sometimes bands, you know, they try to cling to the same idea and they kind of just beat it into the ground and it kind of ruins the song because you're like, damn, you know, it's it's obvious here that, that you didn't really have any other material to kind of fill space in the track. But with this, it didn't feel like they were struggling to fill space. It just felt like they were, you know, naturally kind of progressing, but at the same time staying true to that central idea. And yeah, I thought that was a very well done song. That so far, I think, is my favorite of the three that I've listened to so far. I'm going to go ahead and listen to this fourth track. This is uh, Beyond the Veil. <laughs> Love that guitar line. That's fucking badass, man. You can't argue with the riffs on this track, man. This is maybe the first track on the album so far that's really grabbed me. You know, that's made me, that's got me really excited because um, I love the riffs. But I love also um, there was some, you know, double bass in there. I love that from the drums and then alternating that with the more standard. Uh, rock beat and then kind of slowing everything down and then these uh, you know more gothic eerie guitar lines start to come in um, I just think this is a really badass song 
the so far this is this is definitely if this keeps up right here this is definitely uh gonna get you know slid in there as far as heavy rotation for me because i could rock out to this all day and all day long man this is uh this is really really something so i feel like they've they kind of maybe they were just warming up with the first few tracks i'm sure that some of you out there will prefer the songs that I've already listened to to this one, right? But for me, this one just really, you know, gets me moving, gets me excited. Yeah, this is great. I'm going to go ahead and finish this out. <laughs> To me, that's the best song so far. I loved it, especially the drumming. And the drumming, uh, the latter half of that song. Just everything from the way he was using the cymbals, to the double bass, to just all of the creative fills he was doing, and just the different tempos and drum patterns that he was throwing in there. It really made the song, man. It, it made it come alive. Um, when you're just kind of writing that uh, standard kind of rock beat, and you're just, you know... That, that shit, to me, gets a little bit stale after a while. So I liked to hear him uh, vary it up a lot. He's had other songs on this track listing so far where he's changed tempos a lot and there's been a lot going on. But this song particularly, I was very taken with his drumming. I thought it made the song. Um, the riffs were good too. And some of the guitar lines... Remind me of some of Cradle of Filth's work, actually, which is kind of funny. And I guess it's that goth rock thing coming in, right? That gothic metal sound uh, definitely seems to be making an appearance on this album. So, again, I don't really know how this is classified, but I can definitely hear elements of black metal and goth gothic metal in here. And to me, also, I think I'm just finding out that personally, when it comes to uh, stuff that's blackened or like black metal in general. I really like the up-tempo beats. It doesn't have to be a blast beat per se, but I really love it when 
um, the drums kind of pick up speed and it gets more intense. That to me, that's interesting. Um, a lot of this black and roll kind of stuff, man. I just don't vibe with it very well. To me, it seems a little bit lame. Um, but I know it's a very popular thing nowadays, black and roll. There's a lot of of that out there. But I'm just saying, you know, for me, I like I like my black metal, my black into death metal, and stuff like this. The more gothic stuff that's got uh, influence from black metal. I like it to be a little bit faster than that or at least if it's not it doesn't have to be fast all the time but if there's even variations and changes in the drum pattern and it's not just this this same repetitive monotonous um, drum beat all the time I really like it when they you know when they spice it up a little bit they slow it slow it down and they speed up then they speed up even more and then it goes back down to medium tempo and then you know, it's moving all over the place and the drummer's doing all these different fills and I like stuff like that. It keeps me engaged in the track. So, uh, but we're going to move on to <clears throat> uh, the fifth track. This is called Death Posture. It's uh, four minutes and six seconds. <laughs> This to me has the biggest influence from Death Doom out of all of these. As far as the, you know, the guitar riffs and the, the drum pattern, it sounds to me like something from that genre of metal, Death Doom. But I mean, at a certain point, man, genres and subgenres, they, you know, the lines get blurred so much between them that it really, it doesn't really help anybody to say, oh, this sounds like this and this sounds like that and because there's it's not a science you know there's no clear objective way to tell what's what's what really i mean when you start to split hairs over subgenres it can get pretty silly so i'm not trying to split hairs here or um accurately quantify like what the music is i'm just saying like for me personally it sounds like stuff that i've heard out of that realm you know that death doom stuff so but I really like this so far, man. That opening sequence, I'll play some of it again. I'll, uh, so you guys can hear it. That's serious business right there, dude. Interesting drum patterns. Uh, the chord progression is savage. It's evil. It's dark. Um, what more can you ask for, man? And the bass, 
I haven't been able to say this yet because I keep forgetting, but you can actually hear the bass guitar on this album. Like, it's audible. Like, how cool is that, man? Love that. Yeah, so far, I love this too, man. This is great. I'm going to go ahead and finish it out. <laughs> loved that song. Um, maybe I should retract some of what I said about Death Doom. I don't know if Death Doom's what I'm looking for. And the reason I say that is because, like, some of this reminded me of a band like, I brought them up before on the channel, My Dying Bride, right? And they're considered gothic, you know, gothic doom, basically. Yeah, I, I definitely hear a lot of that in here. So, yeah, maybe this is just considered gothic metal and that's just what it is gothic doom not as much of a black metal influence on this track but i loved this track this is one of my favorites so far on the album like these last three the hunger beyond the veil and death posture to me are the best so far on the on the track and uh, on the album and, and also they're they're the three shortest tracks of all the five that i've reviewed or reacted to so far this one I thought was fantastic, and I'm glad they ended it at 4.06 because I don't feel like they really needed to say anything more on that track. Like, it's perfect the way it is. Just leave it alone, you know? And I'll probably go back and listen to this just to be able to hear that opening uh, <laughs> that opening riff again, man, because that, that was badass. So, loved that one. Um, Going to move on to track six, In the Darkness, The Path. 6 minutes and 32 seconds. <laughs>
this song has the heaviest uh, Satyricon influence, I think, out of all the songs so far. Um, like I said before um, in my review of the Dark Fortress album, Venereal Dawn, I don't necessarily like Satyricon as far as like getting real deep into their music and wanting to listen to a bunch of their stuff. It's just a sound that I'm not, that I don't really gravitate to as much in black metal. I mean, this is okay. It's not, it's not a pain to listen to or anything. I think what may be saving it for me is that, that there are some parts of this song where the music kind of shifts and deviates from that basic formula that bands like Satyricon use, where the drum beat will change up all of a sudden. Or Two, I really liked um, the guitar line that this guy was playing just a little bit ago. You listen to that, you can tell the guy is playing like this real simple guitar melody. And then he gets to the end of it and he does some of that, uh, some of those pull offs, right, on the strings. That's why it sounds like. It has that little flourish at the end, right? I, li I think that sounds really cool and sinister when it's used in some of these darker genres of metal. Like it, it's, it's sort of a classic throwback sound too and I really wish like more like I don't want to see it everywhere obviously because then it'll get oversaturated but um, when I always when I hear that it's kind of it's kind of cool I kind of like that technique in some of these darker forms of metal you don't really hear it a lot in death metal at least from what I've heard but in uh, doom metal black metal some of the traditional heavy metal from the 80s and earlier you you'll hear stuff like that and i think it's i think it's really cool so yeah i'm not really in, into the sound of this song so much it's still not a bad song so i'm gonna go ahead and play the rest of this song out <laughs> not a big fan of that compositional style. I mean, it sounds like it's being done well here. And I'm sure people that are that have no issue with that will like this song. To me, it just leaves a little bit to be desired like 
like black metal for me is supposed to be a few things. I don't want to put it in a box or, you know, put too many restrictions on it, but I think the black metal that I like is usually intense or it could be like very, you know, relaxing and mystical, beautiful, but also dark, you know, mysterious, um, be very progressive, right? Be very doomy, you know, there's a lot of things. It could even be something like uh, Death Heaven, you know, what people call black gaze or, or whatever. I mean, I like a lot of different flavors of black metal. I just, when I hear it mixed with like some of the more conventional drum patterns of, of rock music, it just, it feels a little bit, mm, it's a little bit stale to me. I know I've already said that, but I just want to clarify what I'm feeling here and what I'm thinking. So not my, not going to be my favorite track on the album, but you know, I still think for what it is, for what they were going for, that it was well done. For that, I don't really have any criticisms or issues with what they did. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to track seven. This is called Forever Burned. <laughs> song started and the acoustic intro by the way kind of reminded me of some of the stuff off of uh, Demu Borgir's uh, Storm Blast. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard anything off of that but um, I know there's a song on there that has an acoustic intro at least that sounds very similar to that the one that they use in the song. This is great. I, I could I could listen to this all day. This is this is amazing. So I mean, the drums, you notice the pace is a little bit quicker than the last song, and the drums are a little bit busier, 
and of course the riffs they sound dark and evil but um, yeah this is to me like if I'm gonna put on some obscure black metal album or some obscure you know gothic metal album or what what have you like I want it to sound like this song like this is what I want at least to me it just sounds more it's way more satisfying and interesting to listen to stuff like this that's uh, more intense it's a little bit you know it's dark but it's also got a little bit more intense but it's not necessarily a blast beat being crammed down your throat which I have no problem with blast beats it's just when they get overused as I've said before on other videos even they can get pretty saturated and you know overdone and stale so but this has got a, a nice it's reached that Goldilocks zone where it's quick it's up tempo but it's not it's not going a million miles an hour so I really I really enjoy this song and I'm gonna finish the rest of it out a perfect song man I don't know uh, what to say about that one really I loved again the drummer it seemed like he kept changing uh, tempos changing what he was doing you could hear that bass in there um, the riffs were incredible I'm gonna list definitely listen to that song you know over again probably several times that that song forever burned and death posture beyond the veil the hunger so far these are my favorite tracks on the album uh, in the darkness the path was the only song that I didn't really care for that much I thought uh, to venomous depths the opener and within the timeless black were also both good songs but if you want my favorites it's track tracks three four five and seven so far that's just an awesome song man and not because you know compositionally like they were doing anything too crazy it's just that the aesthetic presented in that song I really I can really get down with that I really enjoy that stuff but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move on to track eight this is called passage and this is two minutes and 47 seconds <laughs>
Tracks like that, when I find them on albums, they always kind of perplex me. Like, I don't really know how to kind of receive those because they're not really songs in the traditional sense. <clears throat> and bands incorporate them into their albums for different reasons. Sometimes you'll find a track like that at the beginning of an album. Sometimes you'll find it a smack dab in the middle of the album. Some bands will put it at the end. To me, I'm guessing that the purpose of this is to kind of set an initial mood for this 10-minute monster track that's going to close the album out. That's what I think this eighth track passage is doing. It's basically a setup, right? It's like in fighting, a lot of guys can land big punches to knock their opponents out, right? But before the guy can land his punch, there's what's called the setup. And the setup is basically him fainting, testing the other his opponent out, seeing where his weaknesses are, you know, where he likes to dip and move and what his tendencies are, and then moving his feet and getting in the right position, and then throwing out a few punches, usually one or two or three or sometimes four punches to get the guy to move and react a certain way to set up for his favorite punch, right? Whether it be an uppercut or a right hook or, you know, a right cross or whatever it is. I feel like this song, uh, Passage, I feel like this is kind of a setup for this last track, this Deep Red Track number nine, the, the closer. I mean, musically, I thought this was a good track. It had a, a, some, a little bit of piano there in the background, um, some ominous guitars, and then uh, the guy delivering these almost spoken spoken or, or even whispered vocals that were kind of cool. You know, very eerie, very dark and mysterious kind of track. But uh, yeah, we're going to get into this last track, this... Track 9, Deep Red. It's 10 minutes and 6 seconds. And it's the closer, so let's uh, buckle in for this one. <laughs>
Ghost BC, anybody? Dude, this sounds the most retro of all their songs on this album. And I think it's the guitar riff, man. I think that's what's doing it to me. I think that um, if I go back and play that opening riff... You guys know the song Ritual by Ghost? It's not a whole lot separating that from this right here. Of course they're different, but it seems like they're in the same apartment unit. <laughs> those, those two riffs, right? It seems like they might be flatmates somewhere. Anyway, we're gonna continue with this track. I actually like the track. I think this band kind of wears their influences maybe on their sleeve a little bit. You know, you can definitely hear different artists in here and it's like that with a lot of bands music I'm not singling these guys out uh, for example you could say the same thing about Slug J I'm sure other other bands I've reviewed I've I've looked at you could say the same thing about Nassim for example you know different bands they tend to oh oh uh, Wolves in the Throne Room same thing I mean you could you can always dissect a band's music and say well this sound came from that place and that riff came from that song and that technique you know originated with this other band or whatever but I think this is playing it a lot closer you know than than some other music I've heard like you can definitely without a doubt pick up on even if you don't listen to a lot of this type of metal like I don't listen to gothic metal all day but I can definitely hear a lot of stuff from different artists that I've heard from that genre. So I don't know how much these guys were influenced by bands like Cradle of Filth and Tribulation and, and uh, Satyricon and Ghost. And I don't know how much influence they, they have, but it seems like there's a lot of that stuff on this record. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this. Yeah.
Okay, they're really putting a lot of chips on the table here. This is the last track, 7 minutes and 30 seconds into a 10 minute track, and this is clearly a build up to something. This is building up to probably the final statement on the entire album, so. <laughs> and they're making it really obvious. So let's see. Um, yeah, I don't normally like to pause it again like that before the song ends, but I just, I hope where they're going with this uh, makes sense and pays off, so we'll see. <laughs> What can I say, man? That was badass. Um, that last song held my interest uh, all the way through. There was kind of an anticlimactic build at the end there, where it felt like they were really going to explode into something really incredible. <laughs> it sucks when you're talking about song structure sometimes, and you're talking about the climax and the build and all this shit, and it starts to sound pretty sexual. I, ha I always hate that. They were pretty much, I mean, if you want to be frank, they were edging you for a long-ass time on that track. <laughs> Especially towards the end, like, you're hearing the drums, it's kind of the the rattling sound of the drums, like it's, uh, like they're almost war, war drums, you know, and like you're marching into battle and you're like waiting for, for this huge explosion or thing to happen, and they kind of chose to go into this, they kind of flatlined a little bit into this, uh, sort of traditional black metal part right here. Let's see if I can back it up. Yeah, right there. Which for them might be the most intense part of the album to them. You know, because they haven't really had too many sections that sounded exactly like that. That makes sense why they would have done that, but it's just, I think they they may have, that build up, that warm up, you know, to get to that point might have overstayed its welcome just a little bit, for my taste anyway. But overall, man, I thought that was a good song uh, too. Uh, there was a lot going on in that song. I'm gonna need to listen to it again to really be able to dissect it the, you know, the entire way through. But honestly, if you want my opinion, I think they did uh, what they did well on this song. They've done well on most of the songs, which are which is basically interesting, creative drum patterns, cha uh, tempo changes all over the place, uh, traditional rock beats, doomier stuff, and then stuff that's closer to 
black, traditional black metal sounding, you know, the faster drum tempos with the double bass and uh, lots of cool fills and then lots of interesting kind of eerie Crypt Keeper type leads, gothic leads with the guitar, riffs that are rocking and then the vocals, I thought the vocals were good on this album too. I was thinking maybe they would pull in more uh, cleans and I only heard cleans on one track. I can't remember what track it was, but I only heard them on one track. But I thought overall this is a this is a badass album. This this album to me, I all, I immediately want to compare it to Down Below by Tribulation. And I'm not I don't know. I don't know, man. I'd have to listen to the Tribulation one again to be able to tell. But to me it's it's in the same neighborhood, you know. It's in the same uh general realm, although I did hear some Satyricon on here, some Cradle of Filth as well. Yeah, I, I thought that this, I thought overall this was very good. If you want my favorite tracks, um, at the top would definitely be uh, Beyond the Veil and Death Posture. Under that would be The Hunger and Forever Burned. Um, under that would be Passage, uh, The Deep Red, uh, Within the Timeless Black, into Venomous Depths, and then probably under that would be In the Darkness, The Path. There's good stuff on here, man. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pretend that this... Just because something may be, in some people's eyes, a copycat of something else, doesn't mean that it's not good. If it's true that this is a copycat of Children of the Night, uh, to me, that doesn't really matter that much because yeah, I thought that this was done well so anyway that's it guys if you enjoyed the video uh, don't forget to like comment subscribe below let me know what you'd like to hear me react to in the future and I think what I'm gonna do is because there are a lot of um, current albums guys that are just coming out that I want to get to on this channel um, I think I'm gonna do one more subscriber request after this and then for a few after that, I'm going to focus on some of the some of the albums that have been coming out recently that I want to get to, and uh, see if I can put those on this channel, and maybe draw in even more uh, listeners and more viewers uh, based on those picks. So they're going to be albums that you guys know about and have probably heard of. Uh, they're just albums that are getting some buzz that. Um, you know, I haven't listened to yet that I really want to listen to and that I think would be good for this channel. So, yeah, and then after I do maybe three of those, so I have one more subscriber request, then I'm going to do three of those that I've just been talking about. Then I'll probably open the floor again and just start taking more suggestions and uh, go that route. So, um, but thank you uh, to uh, the person that recommended this you know who you are um, guys I hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching thank you to all the subscribers for supporting you guys have a good morning uh, good afternoon uh, good evening and good night uh, this is metal album reactions and I'll see you guys next time